Good evening, welcome to our discussions on uh, the economic value added. Uh, is EVA relevant for bank? Often question comes to mind. So, we have seen that EVA is an excess of operating profit after tax over the capital charge and the capital charge is the cost of capital that is VAC into capital employed. Banks have a very interesting financing and assets uh, on their balance sheet. Large chunk of their sources of money is a deposits, the money that they collect from the customers and they give interest on that and they receive interest on it. So, as a result the main operating profits of the bank is the interest margin and the large chunk of the sources of money for a bank is also the deposits. Now, let, let me try to explain that with the actual banks positions in our country. We have seen that more than 75 percent of the total funds of bank is actually deposits. For example, uh, the access bank in 07 balance sheet 85 percent of the funds total sources are deposits. For Bank of Baroda also 86 percent, even a big bank like uh, State Bank of India is in the range of 85 to 86 percent. What does that mean? That means, more than 80 percent of the total sources of banks are from the deposits and large chunk of these deposits are used by the bank for their investment. So, the balance money which is in the range of 13 to 15 percent is coming from their owner's money, owner's fund or a small amount of long term loans. So, we are calculating EVA, there is a need for us to keep in mind this typical nature of the sources of funds of a bank. For calculating EVA for a bank, the operating profit will be computed or no pad will be computed as an interest margin minus the operating expenses and that is a no pad. And from this no pad, instead of calculating VAC for the total sources, we can actually calculate EVA by deducting the capital cost only on the net worth or on the equity. Because we saw that large percentage of the money is the deposits and the deposits is already earning interest and interest on that money to be paid to the deposit holders are deducted from the well computing the no pad itself. So, therefore, the most important issue is what is the cost of equity for the banks and as usual the cost of equity is can be computed by using the capital asset pricing model. So, where we require information about risk free return, we require information about the market return and we require information about the beta and interestingly generally this information is available in most of the available uh, secondary data suppose Provis or even if you go to NSE website it is possible to get that. Our own calculations we have seen that the risk free return we take at 7.5 percent around 7.2 to 7.5 percent. The market return for or by using nifty suppose we take that at around 16.5 percent. So, the risk premium on average for the banks comes to 9.5 9.3 percent. So, by using risk free return and the market return and the risk premium around 9.5 percent we can calculate the cost of equity and the cost of equity. So, therefore, here depends on the beta for most of these companies and the beta of these banks varies across these banks about 8 or 9 which we calculated. We saw that in the range of 1 to 0.7 to 0.6. By using this we get a capital cost or cost of equity. So, if I use the cost of equity and the capital owners money and compare with the no pad we get the EVA. And what is our observation? We saw that most all these seven banks SBI, Corporation Bank, Union Bank, PNB 
HDFC, ICICI and UTI. We saw that all of them have a net profit, but 5 out of this 9 have a negative EBA. What does it mean? That all these banks are making though accounting profits as per their financial statement, they are not able to generate a return which is equivalent to the cost of equity. So, 5 banks out of the 9 banks that we have selected, we have a negative EBA. So, there is a possibility that we can be questioned about the process of calculating K e, calculating the beta, but it gives us a message that some of the banks are showing positive accounting profits, but actually losing money from EVA point of view. So, bank management can ease, use this EVA to analyze the accounting profits composition, analyze the economic profit composition and take decisions accordingly to make the negative EVA the positive EVA. That is possible by improving the margin, reducing the expense and uh, making managing the capital in such a way that the KE can come down. So, I can conclude by saying that EVA can also be used for a bank manager to maximize the shareholders wealth, but to do that analyze the NOPAT, analyze the cost of equity then we might give you some understanding about the overall profitability of the bank. We will continue our discussions on EVA for banks later. Thank you very much.